Hello, and welcome to the seventh episode of the Musicuentos Black Box Podcast, co-sponsored by Musicuentos.com and Indwelling Language. The Musicuentos Black Box Podcast is a collection of media resources intended to form an easy-to-access, easy-to-understand bridge between language acquisition research and teacher practice in the world language classroom. My name is Albert Fernandez, and I am a language learner, elementary and middle school Spanish teacher, and I write a blog with reflections and suggestions for teachers trying to shift to a TPRS or a CI curriculum. The article that I will be talking about today comes from the Nectful Review, that's the Northeastern Conference on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, and it's called Overcoming Resistance to 90% Target Language Use, Rationale, Challenges, and Suggestions, written by Jean Leloup of the U.S. Air Force Academy, Robert Ponterio of the State University of New York in Cortland, and Mark Warford of Buffalo State College. I found that the easiest way to discuss this article is to divide it into five sections. Reasoning of use of the target language, standards, a mandate from professional organizations, classroom situations that lead to L1, systemic and organizational situations that lead to L1, and finally, how to stay in the target language during your class. The article cites just a small amount of the varied positions on use of TL in the classroom by students and teachers. Through this research, the authors come to two conclusions. Quote, first, L2 input and interaction are essential to acquisition and the development of communicative competence, respectively. Second, there is some utility to explicit grammar instruction. The mandate and the standards. In 2010, ACTFL, the organization that among other things developed our world language standards, put out a position paper stating that foreign language teachers should strive for 90% of classroom interaction in the target language. Other professional accreditation and standards making organizations, such as the Interstate New Teacher Assessment and Support Consortium, INTASC, and the National Council for Accreditation in Teacher Education, NCATE, also, quote, emphasize using the L2 to the maximum extent. Now, each and every one of our classes has its own culture. Let's talk about classroom situations that lead to L1. Each and every one of our classes has its own culture. The students and teacher have expectations of each other, and these can sometimes dictate how the class will go for the whole year. In my own classes, the culture used to be one that was Spanish for content and English for everything else. But all that other stuff added up to much more than 10% of classroom time. L1 became my fallback position. Anytime there was a breakdown in communication, anytime I needed to tell the students something, quote, important, I switched to L1. I didn't trust myself to be understood, and I didn't trust the kids to understand. I was in the mindset that some things were just too important to use L2. But things aren't too important. With a proper mindset from the beginning of the year, we can change our classroom and professional culture to emphasize L2 in all of our discourse, no matter how important. Things don't have to be, quote, too important to use L2. On the contrary, the things that are the most important are the things that we should be saying in the L2 only, because it forces students to pay attention and to make meaning through interaction. The article discusses many common classroom situations that can lead to the L1 fallback position. They include checking comprehension by translating from L2 to L1 to make sure students comprehend. Now doing this just trains students to wait for the translation because they will know that they're going to hear L1 immediately after L2. Using L1 for complex grammar explanations. Um, instead of teaching lessons that are dense with grammar rules, why not shift our focus to interaction and communication in L2? Explaining instructions for a new activity is another situation, and instead of explaining the L1, we can keep activities simple and model them with student volunteers, and we can also use a smaller number of common activities that the students recognize. That way, they can focus more on communication and less on procedural questions. Another situation is presenting cultural content. If it is too difficult for students' proficiency level, just save it for later. Managing the classroom is another. And if we review classroom management best practices and teach routines and procedures in the TL at the beginning of the year, we should be able to address this problem. Finally, the last situation is unrealistic expectations for the language course. 
we need to give our students realistic expectations for what they'll be able to do at the end of each year of our courses. The challenges are not just in the classroom, though. In the next section of the article, the authors discuss challenges for pre-service teachers both in class and during internships and practicums. If our foreign language ed programs teach heavy L2 use and our cooperating teachers use L2 heavily in their classes, the new teachers will have a great foundation on which to build their own practices for TL use. The article states, quote, an important goal of any FL methods course should be to prepare pre-service teachers to be knowledgeable, capable, and committed with regard to teaching in the TL, unquote. Now this seems like a given, but they also state that, quote, a large body of research asserts that teachers teach how they were taught and not necessarily how they were taught to teach, unquote. If new teachers don't have the foundation of classes that teach them effective techniques for using the TL in the classroom, and or if they don't have an opportunity for practical application of these techniques in their internships, they will fall back on what they know, which is how they were taught in their own language learning experiences, which might be very L1 heavy. Now here it is. Here's what you've all been waiting for. How do I use the TL 90% of the time in class? Now we've talked about research on L2 use. We've talked about organizations that recommend using 90%. We've talked about common places where L1 use creeps back into our classrooms. And we've talked about gaps in the language education system. But what can be done tomorrow to change my instruction? First, set the stage from day one. Day one doesn't necessarily mean the first day of school. It can be any day that you decide to use the TL 90% or more of the time. Don't worry about the student's proficiency level, and don't let yourself fall back into L1. It can be done. And remember, if it doesn't work and you fall back into L1 more than you wanted to, don't get discouraged. There's always tomorrow to try again. Establish your routines in L2. This goes along with starting on day one. Teach students the meanings of certain high-frequency phrases and the words they need to know to perform your routines, and then use them consistently in the TL in your classroom. These utterances will become the first that the students acquire and give them a taste of what acquisition looks like. Manage the classroom in L2. Use lots of body language, refer in L2 to the routines you've set in place already. Try using the PACE model for grammar instructions. Quote, in the PACE model, students are presented with exemplars of a grammar point in the TL and are then asked to ferret out the rule or rationale for a specific use. By carefully choosing the grammar point, the examples, and the TL used to ask probing questions of the students, this task can be completed by all parties in the TL. You don't always need to use PACE. When grammar points are simple, introduce new grammar or expressions through language use, not explicit teaching. Literally show the students how an activity works by modeling it with a student in the class. There's no need to explain things if you can demonstrate them just as easily. Show short video segments, authentic or not, pausing to interact with students about meaning through circumlocution. Finally, read to students or tell them stories to provide TL input. Using pictures, acting, and gestures engages the students and helps them to understand the content of the story. In conclusion, ACTFUL, INTASK, NK, and the prevailing trends in SLA research show that almost total use of the TL in a language class is necessary for acquisition and development of language skills. There will be many opportunities for L1 to sneak back into our classroom discourse, but if we stay focused and consistent, there's no reason why any language teacher out there can't keep their classes in the TL at least 90% of the time. Will there be times when we don't reach that goal? Of course there will. Is that a reason to stop shooting for it? Absolutely not. Thank you for watching this episode of the Musicuentos Black Box Podcast. Please let us know what you think in the comments. Are you interested in learning more about using TL 90% or more in the classroom? Check out the links in the description and search Google and Twitter for the hashtag TL90+. If you have any other great links to share regarding 90% TL use, please leave those in the comments too. Thank you.